Hey guys, if you like any type of local history or local information or anything that's just kind of like a little weird, a little creepy, but yet still kind of cool, especially with history, this may actually be the video for you. It's going to be a little long, but I promise you, I put a lot into it. You're going to love it. Here is something very interesting in Lake George. There is a construction crew sitting on the ground over here. They have the sidewalk dug up. There is an officer there. There is what appears to be either a detective, maybe a crime scene investigator. When you drive by here, there is a mound of dirt right there. I got a jar of dirt, I got a jar of dirt, and guess what's inside it? Hmm. So something really interesting. See, Lake George has a little dirty secret that you guys don't know about, but I'll tell you. So something very, very interesting and very mysterious about this place, and this is the Pancake House. So you see the old Adirondack Pancake House used to actually be a hospital. And it makes sense because if you look at the building, you can see like an old hospital structure, which is actually really pretty cool. But the thing is, is that it was a smallpox hospital. Oh, there's usually a big outbreak. Like we've had COVID, you know, then there was polio, smallpox, all right? So that hospital used to just take their bodies and just kind of throw them in the backyard, dig a hole, just put them in the backyard. No casket, no coffin, no bag, no nothing. Just take the body, throw it in the backyard, cover it up. So I actually stopped there and guess what? There were bodies in that hole, just as I had assumed. So more than likely from like the 1700s, give or take. But it's not the first time. So let me tell you another little secret. There were actually multiple bodies found around that area. They're doing a building disconnect over there right now. Uh, meaning that they have to disconnect the sewer lines, the electrical, they have to disconnect all the stuff there. So therefore the property has to be dug up. In the meantime, I'm dug and digging it up. There are some other projects that were around the area because I know the guy who's doing the work and I stopped to talk to him just now. But there are several projects that were in the area where they have found other bodies. So they just kind of went about their job, went about their duty, made their report, and then whatever the determination is. 99.9% .9 of the time, they leave the bodies at rest. They stop the project. They're very respectful. Now, here's another little secret about Lake George that you don't know. Everybody knows this place, right? The lovely House of Frankenstein. Kind of morbid that it's called the House of Frankenstein and that it is a haunted house. This used to be the town square. And at the town square, they, that place right there was where they held 2,500, more than 2,500 people in this area were at the town square. Now, apparently, I don't know if I can say the word, but there's also, you know, it's the guy that wears the black hood and has an ax usually a Halloween costume, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, well, you better. So that right there used to be the punishment arena. That used to be the town square. And like I said, more than 2,500 people in one year were, where did they put those bodies? In the ground. So here I am and I'm standing at Fort William Henry. Now the thing about Fort William Henry that people don't understand is that you see how on the lawn over here it says 1755. But the thing is, is that Fort William Henry surrendered. You see, everybody doesn't know about the war, but Fort William Henry surrendered uh, to the French actually in 1757. It was actually August 10th of 1757. So the British over here at Fort William Henry surrendered actually through Fort Ticonderoga, which is just up the lake, about 32 miles that way. So the thing that was interesting about all this is that this was during the French and Indian War. So the British were at Fort William Henry. They surrendered to the French. Now, they also not only pulled out of Fort William Henry, but they also pulled out of Fort Edward. Now, that's some local history that I have always known that people don't realize. So when this all had happened, that was kind of like a stronghold. At the end of the war, like I said, 1757, even though on the front lawn it says 1755. 1757 was actually when 
the surrender and the end of the war had happened. So why the 1755 on the front lawn? Well, it is only because that is when Lake George got its name of Lake George. Lake George actually used to be called Andita Lakti by the Native Americans. The next name that Lake George had was the Lac du Saint Sacrament, which is why if you go by the steamboats, you could see that name of a boat. And that was named by Father Isaac Jacques in 1646. Later on, the lake was called Lake George. By Sir William Johnson in 1755. That's why it says 1755 on the front lawn. Lake George is actually named after King George. Later on, in the late 1700s, maybe around like 1765, 67, I don't know, somewhere around there, that was where the town square did there in front of everybody. Now, these were uh, usually due to political crimes, okay? So you had the French, you had the British, and then you had the Indian. The Indian tribes were the Mohawk and the Mohican. That's why if you look at the Minnehaha area over here where the steamboats are, there is the Mohawk, the Mohegan, and back in the day, there used to be the Ticonderoga boat, which it, they now took the center console of that boat out and they put it onto a barge. That's where the firework barge is. You see how this is like all like connected, how it's all tied together. It is awesome. Like I, I get so excited. Like I love history. So I must not forget about the Algonquins. That's why there's a restaurant on Lake George called the Algonquin. It's a really good place to go check it out. But the Algonquin typically fought with the French alongside with the French against the British because the British also had the Iroquois on their side and the Iroquois and the Algonquins did not see eye to eye. Kind of like the Bloods and the Crips. But for me, all this information is just outstanding. Take the French, the Indian, and the British and you throw them all together, you have people that are working both sides. Some people were working with the Indians, some people were working with the French, the Indians were working with the French, the Indians were working with the British. So therefore there was a lot of treason, there was a lot of uh, you know illegal crimes that were either against the crown or against the states as they say. So that was why they had to over 2,500 in one year. And those bodies are scattered all up and down Main Street in, in Lake George. So that's just a little bit of secrets for you, a little bit of information. I actually hope that you learned something from this because this is just all pretty cool. I get excited about it.